bringing your company into 2021. It's brought to you by the Fremont Group. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit organization that's been working with small business owners since 2001. My name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the executive director of the Fremont Group. Nice looking picture, don't you think? Uh, the Fremont Group, uh, as I said, is a nonprofit organization. We do management consulting uh, for small business owners with our success partners nationwide. We also provide our webinar series, our blog uh, at patreon.com that has all sorts of information for small business owners and useful things. Um, in addition to that, we have an accounting division which does uh, will do your bookkeeping and accounting uh, at a considerable discount and also dovetail together with our uh, success partners and uh, provide you with the information that you need to know to run your company. What we're going to do today is we're going to address the new business model. What was the old business model? Well, prior to uh, the Depression, very few large employers existed. Uh, most people were in effect what we'd call today independent contractors or farmers or handymen or whatever, and they went around and they did a job and they got paid and, and they left. It was really the auto industry and Henry Ford that started up the old business model. And the idea uh, in the auto industry of the uh, production line and one thing passing to the next person to the next person and so on. And as businesses grew and corporations grew uh, in other industries, this type of a model uh, extended. It went uh, into uh, almost all different uh, uh, facets of business where you'd have one person doing something and passing it to a next and passing it to a next and a, a supervisor overlooking it and so on and so forth. Obviously in small businesses, uh, it's not quite as bureaucracy laden, but uh, that was the model that existed forever until this year. The historical business model had all sorts of benefits to it in that it did create a, a, a system within your business. And that's we, when we talk about uh, uh, our webinar series and we talk about your business, we talk about what it is that you own and what you own is a system. It's a system that converts market demand for your goods and services into cash. And all of the tasks that run together in that are your system and how you manage that system is your management system, how you oversee it, where you check in, where you see the different uh, 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 things running through the all the different tasks it requires to take you from market demand to cash. And it's like a chain and if any of those links in the chain are broken, uh, you will not produce as positive a result at the end. And so when uh, our success partners work with you to do a, a quantitative analysis of functionality and, and, and really lay out how your business works, uh, we look for gaps and duplication in that system uh, and how that can be eliminated. But that historical model moved along and it grew and that's the way businesses worked and it was an effective model, although it did create bureaucracy. The only constant is change. And we had an accelerator in 2020 with COVID. All of a sudden, uh, the people were no longer looked at working in the same way. Everyone resists change, but when you have something that works, and because when you have something that works, you want to keep it. And employers now want to go back to what they had because they knew it worked and it was okay. But unfortunately, well, and maybe fortunately, a lot of employees don't. They figured out that working from home was pretty good. Now, obviously, um, there are many jobs and tasks that cannot be done from home. Um, if you're a checkout person at a grocery store, you're not going to be able to uh, work from home. It, and, and all of your basic service types uh, functions are uh, uh, cannot be provided remotely. But what we were going to find is that every business has a mix of those different activities and there are significant amounts of benefit that can come about from adaptation 
to the new reality that COVID has created. And in doing so, you're going to find a new way of looking at even your services businesses uh, that will make a huge difference in where you're going to go. The people who change will thrive. The people that don't may not survive. You've built a successful business and through no fault of your own now, the world has been turned upside down. So where do we go from here? There's been a progression within your, your company. Uh, you started up, you probably didn't take a paycheck, you did whatever you had to do to make it work, then you hired some employees, and then you figured out how to get more work done and how to make money, and you achieved a level of success that you may not even have thought you were going to achieve, uh, and certainly uh, some people around you didn't think you were going to achieve. And you should be very proud of that, you did very well. But now the world is different, and through no fault of your own, things have changed. So where do we go? What do we do now in 2021 to thrive and survive? You're at a crossroads and you have a choice. You can choose to be a hero and companies that do adapt will prosper and those that don't will die. So again, who is affected by this change in the workplace that's been brought about from the pandemic? Everyone is affected. And what can you do about it? What you can do is look at the new business model, the new way of doing things, the new way that will eliminate some middle management, that will make people more productive and happier workers, and it will save you money and increase productivity. Or you can drag them all back, you can go back to the old ways and have to compete against the people who have decided that they're going to adapt. So what is that new way? How do we do it and what are the pitfalls? Modern business has going to have to change their concept from paying by the hour, uh, paying for a person to show up, and rather to pay for results. This became painfully aware uh, to many uh, owners uh, that uh, when people worked from home, uh, they could no longer monitor their daily results or hours and, and how much time they were sitting there and what else were they doing. You couldn't micromanage their time. It was impossible. Those who tried uh, failed uh, miserably. So instead, you pay for results. You pay for a per person to produce defined results. You will have a contract with every employee. The contract reads like this. You give me X results and I will give you Y dollars on Friday. This opens up everything. All of a sudden, you are paying for results. Where do those results come from? How do you determine the results that are needed? I alluded to it briefly earlier. Uh, and in our earlier webinars, we discussed this much more at length. But basically, when you analyze all of the tasks that have to take you from market demand to cash in the bank, they fall into three categories. They get the work in, they get the work out, and they keep track of it. You have those three functions that every business does. And then within that are all of the tasks that have to be completed. Each one of those tasks needs to be defined in terms of a result. What result has to be there? What is it that they have to produce? We have a proprietary program that our success partners use to go through and identify what are the results that have to be there. Now those results have to tie back to your budget. What is your budget? It's a financial plan designed to produce a predetermined desirable result. A financial plan designed to produce a predetermined desirable result. So when you take the sum of all of the results from all of the tasks, it should match your budget. That's a highbrow way of looking at it. In the simplest way, an example would be, and this is very 
simple. Uh, if your company has a $4 million break even in sales, uh, don't uh, set up your sales force uh, with the goal of hitting $3 million. Uh, it's got to match the, uh, pre, the uh, uh, budget that you've established. It's your financial plan designed to produce a predetermined desirable result. That desirable result is the profit that the business is trying to earn. What are the pitfalls within this? Well, the biggest pitfall is that companies have rarely done this. They've written job descriptions as a list of tasks and not as a list of results. Because of this, they try to manage the people and what they're doing with the tasks instead of managing the results. Unfortunately, you cannot manage people. People do whatever they want to do. That's the bottom line. However, you can manage their results and you can create incentives to encourage them to produce more than the results that you are already paying them for. And you can have systems of accountability where bad things happen to them uh, if they don't produce the results that you are paying them for. This is a much more rational way of looking at your workforce. What results are required out of each position? And when you go through that task, what you will find very quickly is that um, some people, you can't figure out what the results are you're supposed to produce. And therefore, why do you have them? You'll find this particularly in some middle management, so to speak. Uh, for example, if a, a person is supposed to uh, uh, complete a certain task uh, within such and such a time frame with uh, uh, you know, such and such level of accuracy, you add to that responsibility, their responsibility to report themselves to owners or management of the next level, whatever it might be, uh, that, this, that it's been completed. Now you don't need people to go back to find out if it's been completed or not, because they have told you that it has been completed and it can move on to the next place. Uh, the, you, can, you will find all sorts of opportunities to streamline an organization when you do this sort of thing. You'll also find ways of holding people accountable. You'll also find ways that uh, um, you'll have a peace of mind of knowing that uh, results have been produced without having to go find out yourself. If you've defined them properly and working with our success partners and putting that together, all of a sudden your time changes significantly. But if you fail, fail to, uh, to clearly define those results and communicate them to the employee and let them uh, have a, a way of, uh, of managing and, and knowing whether or not it's been accomplished, uh, then uh, you're going to have a problem because you're trying to manage in, a, in the 2021 way in the old fashioned model. So what is the process to bring your company into 2021 management and make yourself profitable to go forward? The success partners of the Fremont Group have a six step program to get you there. The first one is to do a business assessment. What is a business assessment? Our success partner meets you, comes onto your site for a day and a half, goes through your business, identifies your issues, and uh, gets to know your company, gets to know you, uh, and, and uh, goes through your financials, meets some employees, and so on. At the end of the day and a half, the two of you, which is step two, agree upon an action plan. What are the issues that are in your way? What are the things that are stopping you? What has to be done? And what action should be taken by you? What action should be taken by employees? What action should be taken by the success partner uh, to get you running in the way you want to go and address the issues that are identified in the business assessment? The third step is to look at your accounting and your financial uh, reporting. Uh, your accounting is needs to dovetail in with the information that is needed by you to run the business. It's not a matter of somebody just sitting there and keeping the QuickBooks. It's somebody that obviously does complete the QuickBooks and the payroll and so on, but is also producing timely, accurate, and usable reports on your key profit indicators that are identified by 
your success partner and yourself, the information that you had to know. What we like to use as the example of this, imagine, as long as you're not in Omaha, imagine that your business is in Omaha and you're not. What information would you have to know on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to make sure that that business is running effectively? Those are your key profit indicators and you need timely, accurate, and usable reporting on all of that. Fourth step is to go through your financial side of your business and make sure that you have created two critical management financial reports. One is your budget. Your budget tells you what you can afford. Your budget is your uh, financial plan designed to produce a predetermined desirable result which is the amount of profit that you are trying to make. What is your plan to make it? How, what are we going to have in cost of goods? What are we going to have in overhead? What are the key variables we want to be looking at? And how should those things be monitored against that budget, which is your plan? Most programs that, uh, that do budgeting just look at the past and where you've been. That doesn't matter. What matters is what you're trying to do going forward. And so tied back in with your accounting, budget versus actual reports are produced sometimes weekly, sometimes bi-weekly, and sometimes monthly, depending on the stage of the business and what you're doing, um, that compare your results against your plan, against your budget, which is your plan. And then you can actually control things and make changes while it will still affect your bottom line, not after your bottom line has been affected. The fifth step is operational. And that is to go through and do a quantitative analysis of functionality. Look at the three aspects of your business, how you get the work in, how you get the work out, and how you keep track of it. Break down the tasks that are required. Put, the, put into each a, a result that needs to be produced. Assign them to your appropriate people. And make sure that part of their re requirements of their job is to report that the results have been completed uh, and have a feedback system so that you don't have, no one has to go look for it uh, constantly. This allows you to open up a lot of things, allow some people to work from home, like our accounting people that can take over your accounting, and uh, also uh, other aspects of it. And all you are now concerned about is are the results that you need being produced? You're no longer trying to beat your head against a wall by managing people you're now managing results. You truly have the rudder of your ship and you can take it where you want to go. The odd uh, unintended consequence of this is that it, in the big picture, the 2021 management style does create many more opportunities for uh, women and minorities. Uh, particularly those that can be working from home, uh, as many of the, the uh, former perceived prejudices disappear when you're not trying to manage people, uh, and instead you're managing results. Um, if a person can produce the results, uh, they're there, and there's a pool of people who uh, may not have had got uh, received uh, positions uh, that can produce those results and uh, make a significant difference in your business. And then lastly, you can't just do this. This is a relationship that lasts forever. The sixth aspect of our program is continued support. There is a weekly Zoom meeting uh, set up between you and your success partner, uh, where, you re where your success partner holds you accountable for the continued implementation. It may also, once a quarter, once every six months, once a year, come back in again and do an updated assessment and kind of start the whole program back over again to update it and bring it back into alignment. Uh, the uh, ongoing support is critical. You'll be asked to, pr to have three meetings a week uh, some of which your success partner may sit in in, but uh, each of which uh, the minutes should be forwarded to him or her. Um, that should uh, inc include a meeting each week, a financial meeting. It should include a meeting for operations, and it should uh, include a meeting for sales. 
Those three meetings, which take a half an hour each with your it tops with your key people. We do have a saying, by the way, anything over 45 minutes is a therapy session and not a meeting. Um, those three are the only three meetings that you really have to have that are critical within your company. And that's an hour and a half a week. If they're regularly scheduled, done right, you, and you're held accountable to having them by turning your minutes into your success partner, they're discussed once a week, with your success partner, you will find that you have an entirely different management style. You will retain that you have now time to actually run the company, to look for new opportunities, to look for pitfalls, to see where the market is going, and actually utilize your talents instead of making you do the unassigned tasks uh, from your position. Uh, your quality of life will significantly change, and you're going to find that you're going to make more money. One of our sayings is just this. Your success is limited to the excuses that you are willing to accept. What do we mean by that? Well, when you've asked someone to do something and they didn't do it, as soon as they open their mouth, they're going to repeat one of two things, either a, an excuse or a reason. And the difference between an excuse and a reason is the excuse simply isn't true. A reason is true. Let's take the parent-child. You've, you've got a curfew at 10 o'clock. The child's supposed to be home at 10. Uh, they come in at 10, 10. As soon as they open their mouth, they're going to give you an excuse or a reason. And a reason might be, oh, there was a tornado. I had to help pull this woman out of the ditch. I got there, blah, blah, blah. We did this, and I had to help the police with this and that. And I finally, it took me 10 extra minutes to get home. Okay, that's a reason, and you can accept that. But anything else, practically, is an excuse. And as soon as you're willing to accept that, your, your success in managing that child, just like the employee, is going to limit your success. It's all and your success generally is it's defined in two ways. It's defined in profit and quality of life. And so if you want to limit your profit and your quality of life, fine, accept those excuses. But now when you have an objective standard that says these are the results that must be produced, the person has to report to you that the results were produced. If they didn't do it, you can decide that it's an excuse or a reason. If it's an excuse, you or a reason and what your options are this you can either retrain the person so that they can then produce the results you can either then or another option is replace the person uh, so that uh, someone gets there that can do the job or you can change your system you can change your budget. You can change different things because you have agreed with them that it is a reason. And so therefore, we're going to have to move this much money out of cost of goods and, and, and uh, uh, put it into uh, overhead or vice for whatever it might be, uh, because what they're saying isn't possible and, and our plan really doesn't work and we need to modify it. And that's OK. That's OK. But if you do nothing and just let the person go and accept their excuse, you have now lost. So. Your success is going to be limited to the excuses that you're willing to accept. You can have basically three options. You can uh, ignore this advice and uh, what uh, we're trying to do to move you into 2021 management. Or you can try and do it yourself. Or you can work with us as a success. Our success partners have been there, they've done that. You will be astounded to find out the size of the investment that is required as it is significantly less as a nonprofit organization uh, than uh, are the for-profit management consulting firms that are out there. We've seen uh, bills of 30, 50,000 and higher uh, for uh, these types of services. Um, it'd be hard to imagine uh, any any work with the Fremont Group uh, coming anywhere near half or a third of that. Um, but our system works, and we'd like you to give it a try. And I do want to thank you for listening to this. I hope we've opened your eyes and made you think a little bit about how the world has changed and what you're going to have to do to address it. 
Um, if you liked it or didn't like it, that's fine. We'd like to know either one. Uh, send us an email at admin at tfginfo.org or give us a call, 303-338-9300. Uh, uh, we, we're glad to talk with anyone, uh, any business owner, about any issues that you might have. Uh, we would start, of course, uh, if we did work with you with an initial uh, uh, consultation, uh, the business assessment where we come in and, and do identify what issues you have and create an action plan. Some people stop right there. Um, but that's pretty rare, frankly. Um, and we have a lot of services and things that can help you. I uh, hope you've uh, got something out of this, um, and we hope to hear from you. Again, my name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the executive director of uh, the Fremont Group. Take a look at our website at tfginfo.org, the Fremont Group, tfginfo.org. Um, and uh, we hope to hear from you. Give us a call. Thank you, and best of business.